With this video, I christen the, the 5700 XT. But this video isn't really about performance, which is actually quite good. This is now on par with the RTX 2060, and we're gonna talk more about that. But uh, the story surrounding the launch of this card is one of intrigue, mystery, and misdirection. Was it a Machiavellian sequence of events, or is AMD just incredibly lucky? Forget another boring card review. What if I told you, and this is purely conjecture on my part, mind you, that AMD sent reviewers cards that were worse versions of the retail versions of these counterparts, like the, the retail version of the 5600 XT, actually worse. And in their press kit and all the materials, they're comparing it to the 1660 Ti. And if that was true, it was a brilliant move done intentionally. It's almost more interesting than the card itself. I'm Wendell, this is level one. Let's take a deeper look. First up, this card, that's the Sapphire Pulse 5600 XT, by the way. MSRP, it's gonna be about 289 US, US dollars. It has a performance switch in actual reality. The, the two modes are 160 watts, both the memory and the GPU clocks will go up above what AMD has initially stated. And in this mode, the boost clock is about 1750 with the game clock, that is the typical clock that you'll see in most games, a very respectable 1600, uh, 1615 megahertz. So pretty awesome. In silent mode, the other mode on the switch, it's down to 135 watts board power, and that's gonna be about 1620 megahertz for the game clock and, or boost clock and 1460 for the game clock. In the increased memory clocks mode with either of those switches, well, it's gonna help because the 5600 XT has six gigs of GDDR6, but it's only 192 bits wide as compared with the wider setup on the 5700 XT. So it'll help make up some of the difference there. For this card, we tested it against the MSI RTX 2060, but that wasn't the initial plan. It was the 1660 Ti, remember? Well, we first took a look at the 2060 from MSI on launch day. The RTX component was a little too weak to do anything useful, and maybe the RTX tax was a little high, but MSI did a great job of putting this card together. It's a great GPU, it runs well. Head to head, the RTX 2060 was faster than the 5600 XT, but costs a lot more, you'd expect that. But here's the thing. Nvidia, almost on the same day that reviewers were starting to get their cards, Nvidia cut the price of these RTX 2060s to partners like MSI. So cards like this are now about $50 US cheaper. Suddenly that 289 MSRP on the 5600 XT, well that's not looking so good for AMD and comparison shoppers that are you know, trying to compare apples to apples on GPUs. Nvidia is competing. Uh, at least their competition strategy is a little bit different than Intel's. Nvidia is actually going directly head to head with AMD and like preemptively doing stuff maybe. I mean, their spies are everywhere. But wait, did AMD know that Nvidia would know? And knowing that they knew that they would know, did they do something different? Well, I don't know. As soon as, in, as, soon as the news broke that Nvidia was gonna drop their price by $50 US, almost immediately, I get an email from AMD. It's like, hey, uh, you're gonna want to run this file against your GPU and bloop, just like that, just like when Mr. House unlocked the Securitrons, holy crap. Now with the update and what's in retail cards, we are on par with the RTX 2060. Forget in the RTX 2060's neighborhood, we're in the RTX 2060's neighborhood in a nicer house at a lower price. Oh, and that price cut that I mentioned before, I checked right before this video went live and you can't buy the RTX 2060 on nvidia.com, at least at the time that I'm making this, right before this video goes live. And the uh, price drop is not reflected in the RTX 2060s that are on sale at Newegg. So it might be a little while before that price drop is actually like purchasable, whereas the 5600 is available right now, today. As a matter of fact, with this video. So for our testing, we use the ASRock Creator X570 fast G-Skill memory and a Ryzen 3900X at stock settings, except of course for the XMP stock speed. We also tested on an older Intel 5930K, which I think is a computer that's probably representative of what many prospective upgraders already have and are not gonna wanna upgrade, they're just gonna wanna update the GPU. XMP was set on the Intel system as well, as 2666 with a mild overclock of 4.3 gigahertz all core. That's six cores, 12 threads. Now the 3900X, that is a reasonable best case scenario. And the 5930K is a reasonable sort of mid-grade approximation. If you're buying a new machine, the performance is gonna be closer to the 3900X, even if you get a 3600X because games. 
the 5930K uh, does show quite a spread, you know, quite a differential in clock speeds, but you can claw a lot of that back with a, with a better overclock. So let's take a look at the numbers. Now our focus in these benchmarks was mainly on 1080p gaming. I think it would also be fair to say that if you had a high re refresh display like some of the Pixio monitors that we're so fond of, 1080p of course, you can easily expect this card will do more than 60 FPS with just some settings tweaks or maybe even on like high or ultra. So if you want 90 FPS pushing 100 FPS at 1080p, this card can do it in most of the titles that I tested. Sapphire has built a great card. It's two and a half slots, the red and black aesthetic, and of course with AMD, you get all the cool features that we've covered in the past, things like Radeon Boost, which is a small sacrifice in image quality, image fidelity, for a big gain in frame rate minimums. You also get Radeon Anti-Lag, which can shave maybe a frame or two off of the response time of the game, so when you click, stuff happens a little faster. And Radeon Image Sharpening, which is something that I use myself to play most games at 4K, but with 1440p frame rates, because it's just, it's upscaling, but it's smart upscale. AMD Link also gets an honorable mention here because it leverages hardware H.265 acceleration in Navi, which that acceleration is legit incredible. They've done a really amazing job. Now out of the box, the experience for streamers and encoders is still not where it should be. But I can see that AMD is spending a lot of time and energy trying to get this right. It's possible to get a good setup with OBS and the, the H.265 hardware encoder really is legit better than anything that NVIDIA has, but most people are gonna be using H.264. Maybe AMD can bribe Twitch to add support for H.265 for streamers. That, that would actually be pretty killer. While I'm complaining, <laughs> the drivers have bugs that need attention. The bugs are almost always not severe, but they can be super annoying. The 5500 XT didn't have the warmest of receptions in my opinion. It's not a bad card, but Unlike the 5500 XT, which is PCI Express by eight, and I pointed that out, and it could be a problem if you have a, v, a, a game that's exceeding the VRAM and it's gotta hit main memory, but this is PCI Express by 16 and PCI Express by 16 by four, so even if you're using it in an older system like Air 5930K or a relatively recent system, it's gonna perform well. So overall, I think this launch is a better launch than the 5500 launch. And the whole move, counter move, pawn to bishop three, it's a, uh, it's got a lot of in intrigue and suspense. It's palpable. Good job to everybody on the AMT team that made this possible, but uh, now's not the time to slow down. You're gonna, gonna have to double down. I'm Wendell, this is level one. Here's hoping the big Navi team has someone like Agatha Christie on it, because I can't wait to see what happens next.